Hi, I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Before I get going with this video, I just want to thank you guys so much for all the great name suggestions. Uh, the boys and I are looking over all of them. Uh, Babe seems real happy with quite a few of those names, and she is teething on me pretty much nonstop. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me during this series of videos. I really do believe that healing starts with good health and for me, I started to heal from the inside out because I knew I was sick. Now, right as I was planning my exit stride, just before I left Trevor, I had become so ill, so weak, so frail, I had lost so much weight. When I was standing in a grocery store, people were actually pulling their kids away from me. I looked like a junkie. I really did. There's no denying that. I was so thin. I had big dark rings under my eyes. I was stuttering. I was shaky. Um, I was constantly on the verge of tears. My hair was falling out. I constantly had wads of Kleenex with me because my nose was bleeding all the time. Uh, my stress level was absolutely through the roof and it had taken an incredible toll on my body. I was going from doctor to doctor doing series of tests. I thought for sure I had cancer. Now, speaking of cancer, I just want to let you know that in Canada and the US, uh, both countries, well documented, we have the two worst food supplies on earth, the two most dangerous. Uh, pretty much everything now in those two countries is genetically modified though Canada used to have a lot of organic farmers, uh, Monsanto's crops have tasseled with them and if you know anything about seeds tasseling, a seed can travel 500 miles in the wind, especially in the prairie wind which contaminated so many organic farmers fields. So uh, organic farming is really at a minimum now in Canada. There have been lots of issues with this happening in the United States as well. We have no regulations on genetically modified foods. And though Mexicans do grow genetically modified foods, they do not eat them here. All are shipped to Canada and the US. These people eat organic food and cancer rates are very, very low here. In fact, they're not even on the list, which stops at I think number 50 or something. Okay, so with that said, um, I was kind of checking the cancer rates in Canada and the US, which says one out of every two people in Canada and the US will get cancer. This absolutely blew my mind. I mean, I instantly felt like I'd been punched. I felt sick. Uh, this is not happening naturally. This. Uh, yeah, there's something wrong with this number. So I'm thinking that's got to be the highest rate in the world. So I continue to research. Hell no. No, there are many countries uh, much worse off than Canada in the U.S. Denmark, number one. 1 1.7 out of every two people in Denmark is estimated to get cancer. I got to tell you, if I was living in Denmark, I would be asking some questions. In fact, I wouldn't live in that. That is not some type of natural evolution. That looks like genocide to me. I mean, it's absolutely horrendous. Uh, below Denmark was France, then uh, Australia, then Belgium. I mean, the, the statistics are so bad. And to be honest, those countries have a better food supply than Canada and the US, so I don't really understand what's going on, but something's going on. So what that tells me is no one is trying to protect you. No one, no one is trying to protect me. That responsibility falls solely on us. Who is most susceptible? Well, it's going to be people with high levels of stress, people that live in states of panic and anxiety. It's going to be people with damaged DNA, and it's going to be people with damaged immune systems. Damn it, it's going to be us. So we need to protect ourselves. Really great superfood for helping with the prevention of cancer is going to be papaya. Now, I cut this papaya open just to show you. If you're not familiar with papaya, it's a tropical fruit. They tend to be quite big. This is a Mexican papaya. I would stay away from any Hawaiian papaya as all are genetically modified. But if you can get papaya from Mexico, Nicaragua, or Honduras, you're going to be getting good, safe, organic papaya. Now, the papaya is loaded full of seeds. Now, if you want to grow a little papaya tree, you just scoop those out. Unfortunately, you can't harden off papaya seeds and then um, rehydrate them later. It doesn't work that way with papaya. You've got to take them when they're pulpy like this. I take a little pot. I've got um, some soil in here, but I've got, you know, it's down 
to about here because I'm going to put in a fairly thick layer of wet pulpy papaya seeds. I'm going to cover that with earth and I'm going to keep that pretty wet. And in fairly short time, you're going to see papaya trees growing up. Uh, once three or four good hardy looking ones have come up, I will then transplant those and just dump the rest because if they're going to be late bloomers or they're weak or the stems are weak, I'm really not interested in them anyways. Then I transplant them and here's two little papaya trees here. They grow incredibly well. Now I'd started some when I first got here, uh, so they were probably about that high. And papaya is a really pretty tropical plant. In fact, it's a very small tree. And if you live in a warm climate, uh, it's very easy to grow outdoors. But if you live in a cold climate, you can also grow papaya in your window. So I'm about 5'7". So even at about 5 feet, a uh, papaya tree will really start producing fruit and very heartily. Uh, they're just great uh, tropical fruit trees and you can grow them indoors and they're very, very pretty plants. So I really encourage you to get yourself a papaya and uh, give this a try because, well, you guys know I love gardening and we're going to get to gardening soon, but papaya is incredible for reducing your stress. It helps improve eyesight. Uh, it is a great cancer preventative. In fact, uh, I do believe that's why people have much less cancer in the tropics because papaya is a staple fruit and there are so many ways you can serve papaya. I keep tons of bags of papaya frozen in the freezer for smoothies. In fact, I don't think a day passes where I don't eat papaya. Now something we do with it here is we eat it fresh with some uh, hot sauce on it, a little bit of salt and some lime, which is delicious. I eat that every day as well. Uh, something else I do with papaya is I'll put it in the blender with a heavy cream, uh, some coconut syrup, and I'll make uh, popsicles, like creamsicles, and they're absolutely delicious. So if you're looking for a really great sweet treat, you can make, uh, I, I leave them kind of chunky, like I don't blend it up too smooth because I like pulling out pieces of papaya, but um, any of these fruits can be used uh, for smoothies, uh, for fresh waters, and to make sweet treats with as well. Now, something I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be doing mixed fruit jam. Um, I'm not going to do a full tutorial on that. If anyone's interested in learning some really simple jams or homemade sauces or fruit syrups, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to do it. Now, I don't have to go to the market here. I mean, I do go to the market, but I don't have to because pretty much everything comes up the street and you can hear them coming. They've got the big, you know, megaphone on their truck and, you know, whether they're selling peanuts or pineapples or whatever it is. Today, uh, the truck came by and I can hear him from quite a distance and today he had strawberries. So I got uh, two kilos. Um, I got fresh raspberries. I got fresh blueberries. I got bananas. This is about half of what I actually got because the rest are already chopped up and in the freezer. And I got this big papaya, and I think that was about 200 pesos. I don't know how much that is exactly, because I really try not to constantly be converting. I've got to live with pesos. I have a peso currency here. But um, either way, 200 pesos is not much money. The first step to healing was good nutrition. And yes, I get it. It is an absolute pain in the butt to process a whole ton of fruits and vegetables. Do it all in one day. Do enough for a month. Just fill the freezer with bags and it's over with. I put out my cutting boards. I get my knife. I've got a big bag for waste beside me. And I really don't use a lot of this. Some of it I can use for my compost bin. But because I'm processing a lot of um, acidic citrus type fruits, uh, I don't put those in a compost bin. So um, a lot of it goes in the waste, but either way, I get it all done. It takes me probably an hour and I'm good for a month. So you need to become willing. You need to become determined and dedicated to your own good health and give yourself that hour once a month to ensure you've got a freezer full of fresh fruits and vegetables. Also a great way to start a seed bank. I do believe that seeds are of vital importance for each and every one of us, especially in a world where the food supply is getting worse and worse all the time. If you've got your own supply of natural organic seeds, you're going to have a bit of security that a lot of people don't have. I'm going to do a video about seed saving because I do believe it's tremendously important. 
even if you save seeds and create this incredible seed bank for your children or your grandchildren, something that will stay with your family, that your family will have for many generations, um, I, I think it's extremely important. I've got, uh, absolutely, I will admit that I've got gardening OCD. A absolutely, I do. There's no denying it. I just love growing things. But you got to know, most of my seeds, I harvest myself comes by with uh, vine ripened tomatoes as they do very frequently. I'll just buy tons and tons of them. I do canned tomatoes but first and foremost I get the seeds out of there, I ferment them, I dry them and those seeds get labeled, dated and safely tucked away. For a lot of people I think you know they're wondering you know how do I start seed saving? How do I start gardening? Where do I get the seeds? Well, if you're buying fresh organic food, the seeds are already there. You've already got them. I talked about forming new habits, and I will tell you, um, my kids always grew up with a lot of natural organic alternatives for snacks. You know, the boys would come in from playing. Of course, my boys grew up here in Mexico, and they'd say, Mom, what's for a snack? And they would have an option of guavas, mangoes, or bananas. You know, there was never a Snickers or a Cheeto option in that sort of mix. So my kids tend to eat very, very well. But another thing they do is they, too, save seeds. You know, if Eddie comes and gets an apple out of the bowl, he'll come back with the core and a fistful of seeds and say, Here, Mom, here's the seeds, you know. So as a family, we are seed savers. And it doesn't take long to form that habit. You know, if you buy a really nice-looking organic watermelon, get the seeds out of there. Watermelon's extremely easy to grow. I know for many of you, if you're healing and not feeling great, especially if you're still in that heightened state of anxiety and panic, eating sometimes is difficult or you'll make a really bad dietary choice and I did too but I had to become extremely committed now some of you are mentioning in the comments that my birthday is coming up again uh, today is February 2nd my birthday is February 5th and I will be 58 years old or as my boys refer to my age as more than half of a hundred Another really important issue, a really grave health issue that we need to be considering is stroke. I cannot tell you how many emails I've received from friends here at the channel telling me they've had a stroke, they've been diagnosed as high risk of a stroke. So with that sort of health issue looming, I mean, why not become dedicated to helping yourself? Now, showing a little self-love can be done very easily with good nutrition. It allows you to start to heal from the inside out. Another thing it does, it allows you to refocus. And in that hour when you're processing your fruits and vegetables, you are showing incredible self-love for yourself and you are focusing on something positive versus something negative. I just want to tell you a really short story here. Um, my son Jacob, as you know, has some um, health issues. Jacob has acquired brain injury from a dirt biking accident when he was 13, which later triggered what has been diagnosed as schizophrenia. The very last time I was with Jacob in the doctor's office, we were in Moose Jaw. We were in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. And I was talking to the doctor and I said to the doctor, you know, we eat organic foods. Jacob has a pretty good diet. He gets a lot of rest. He doesn't do any type of drugs or alcohol. He gets a lot of exercises or anything else you could suggest. And this doctor, I swear to God, looked me straight in the eye and said, oh, diet's overrated. At that point, you know, I start giving Jacob the, you know, twitchy face and Jacob and I both stand up and walk out of there. Not another word said to that moron and we never saw that doctor again. So my personal experience is that doctors want to sell you barbiturates. Doctors want to get you dependent on big pharma. They don't want to talk to you about papaya that's going to help prevent cancer, reduce your stress, help your eyesight. I, they don't want, oh, another one that's really, really great is weight loss, uh, weight regulation, uh, immune system boosting. It's a great arthritis preventative. I mean, the list goes on and on. Now, doctor doesn't want to talk to you about that. They want to tell you that good diet's overrated. That, to me, is a major red flag. That tells me that I am dealing with a system that doesn't have my best interest at heart. So I take matters into my own hands.
We're going to continue moving through all of the ways that I healed, and this really is my gift, my thank you to all of you for your continued support. I love you guys lots. I just know from my own personal experience that healing has to start from the inside out. So I really encourage you guys to love yourself today. Feed yourself well, and I'm going to be talking to you real soon. I love you guys so much. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you're having a great and free day.